My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter. I hope everybody can hear me okay. All right, we're here to talk about payroll new year prep, preparing for the new year for 2025. So let's jump into Church Windows payroll for just a minute, okay? At the very top of that document, it talks about whether you are paper filing or e-filing, you will go through our third-party company, Atrix. All right? What I'm what that means is um, if you go to our website and our partners page, you'll see Atrix e-file. When we go to reports export and we go to tax reports here and tax forms, this is where the relationship between Church Windows Payroll or Church Windows Accounting and the Atrix e-file system start to interface. Okay? This list of forms that we are looking at right here is all based on what, what Church Windows Payroll is getting from Atrix now. Okay? We get that question. We've got, I've gotten more and more of those over the course of the past um, you know, three, three or four months, though, is, well, what, what, what do you mean I have a relationship with Atrix? Well, you don't, but you do sort of vicariously by road of your relationship with us. So whether you're e-filing your tax reports and documents or you're printing those to mail those in, this area is where we begin that actual interface between Church Windows Payroll or Accounting and the Atrix program, Atrix system, okay? So if you're using our software to produce your tax forms, you do have a relationship with Atrix to a certain degree, okay? Notice there also below that heading about Atrix, starting tax year 2023. This is last year, folks, or in 2023. If you have 10 or more total returns, not 10 W-2s or 10 1099s, 10 combined total information returns of W-2s and 1099s, you are now required to file electronically with the IRS. Okay? There was a lot of confusion about that. I think the government was being fairly, you know, lenient about it last year because it was new and folks were struggling with it a little bit or it was unclear. Okay? Um, but this year, they're probably going to become a little more strict about it. And if you mail in forms or mail forms into them when you have 10 or more combined returns, you may be assessed a fairly severe penalty. Okay? So just be aware. If you have 10 or more total combined returns of 1099s and W-2s, you are now required to e-file. Okay? So what it says there, it says in the third paragraph is what this new IRS rule means to you is businesses, including churches, must e-file if your total number of informational returns is 10 or more. That simple. That threshold applies to your combined number of returns. So if you have five W-2s and five 1099 NEC forms, you must e-file. Okay. That link under the more information points to a URL that you can enter that goes to the U.S. Treasury Department that talks about the regulation with regards to e-filing, okay? So the next topic there talks about how many W-2s will you file, all right? In payroll, the, you know, you can only produce the W-2s from Church Windows payroll, of course, right? So um, that's a fairly simple number to be able to determine. And how we do that is... We go right up to reports, we go to tax reports, we go to draft W-2 form, okay? Folks, I can't stress this enough. This is not the official W-2 form for any year. It is just a draft, okay? So we choose 2024, we go to next. Here's a list of all of our employees. I can include terminated employees if I wish. So if I had somebody who I was paid, who I had paid during the year, that I had entered a termination date for in 24, I will probably want to check that, okay, because I want to make sure everybody's being included. I think it brings them in anyway, but if not, check it. It doesn't hurt to check it. It's not going to bring in anyone that wasn't paid, all right, and simply go to next, okay. When then when it brings up the form, this now shows us page one of five, two employees per page, of course, so if I go down to the very last page, I see that I've only got one employee on the top. So basically, 5 times 2 is 10 minus 1. I have 9 W-2 forms. Okay? 
All right, so that tells you exactly how many W-2 forms you need to um, produce. All right. Also, what about 1099s and contractors? So when I close out of that and I go to finish, okay, some of you may be paying your contractors through accounting. Some of you been maybe paying some paying your contractors through Church Windows payroll. Payroll. Some of you may in fact be paying contractors through both. Okay. So in payroll, again, it's a fairly simple process. We don't have at this point a draft 1099 form, but what we can do is go to something like pay reports, pay reports, pay period earnings you know, maybe pay type earnings, and maybe right here, make sure that we're entering it for the full year, okay? And we go 12, 31, 24, maybe I'll change this to my contractors, and then click print, and this shows me how many contractors that I've paid through payroll. So I've got one right here for Joe Greenthumb, who definitely has the 600 mid dollar minimum to to print or generate a 1099 for so i've got to send him one so between my two my nine employees and my one contractor pay in payroll alone i now know i must e file okay so those two combined are 9 and 1 is 10 so i have to e file well no matter how many more i may have to produce from the church windows accounting module all right so how we can do that there is Let's jump into accounting now. So here we go. We're going to go into accounting. So what? there is no real simple, easy way for us to determine. I mean, not like you can't go to the forms. You know, when I go up to reports and tax and I try to do this, I don't have the 1099s for 2024 yet. The government hasn't made any of those tax forms available yet. So I have to be creative in my way that I can generate that. So you can do it in a couple ways, and we've got that detailed at the bottom there, a page of that first page of there, and that is to go into Transactions and Browse, go right up here to the upper left, Change Year, Filter, and Sort, okay? So we're gonna do Clear All on the far right, checking just Payment Transactions, okay? And then click OK. And then we're going to pick up the column here called account name and drag it right up here to where it says drag a column header here, drop that, and here it shows each one of our vendors that we have paid. Now it shows the debit amount, of course, because the debit amount is the only portion of that that pertains to the vendor and the payment. So we can clearly see, you know, we've got quite a few couple vendors in here that have been paid. Now you have to determine who gets a you know a 1099 right i'm not sending a 1099 to my electric company or to my gas company or my vendors right you have to determine what vendors are considered actual vendors that do receive those 1099s but this is a way to determine that um to determine who you know get a quick review i can go right from here now to print transaction journal and print this Oh, uh, that's not very printer friendly. Let's see if we can make that better. Let's go to change year, filter, and sort, group and sort. Let's try totals only. Now try clicking print. There we go. So now when I've now gone to group and sort and checked totals only on that, it shows me each one of my vendors listed alphabetically with their total debit amounts um, in terms of the payments that I've paid them. So I can determine fairly quickly and easily here from who, who, who will get a 1099 in Church Windows Accounting and who won't. Just FYI, folks, if you've got contractors in both payroll and accounting, there is a way that you can merge those and produce one single e-file or file with them to send or e-file through Atrix. There is a reason why we've taken them on, uh, uh, taken them on as our documents, our tax documents producer or provider. And this is one of them. They make the process very simple and easy. Uh, and so, again, you can go out right now under the Resource Center page and look up a video and a document on producing 1099s and W-2s and what have you. Now, that would be from last spring or last January or earlier last year, this year from 2023. But the, the process is fundamentally the same, okay? There might be some slight changes to their interface, but we'll have... We'll have webinars on those here um, 
in, in, right after the first of the year, likely. Okay. So when we move on to page two, you know, mailing W-2s and 1099s, note if you have more than 10, you have to e-file and you may be subject to a penalty if you don't. Okay. Okay. So W it also says then there below that W-2 forms may be printed through Atrix on plain paper. If you have less than 10 returns, you may file the paper copies and mail them in. Now, we're not going to go through that today. If you would like to look at that, again, let me bring up my uh, home page here. And if we go to our Resource Center page, load that right here. Come on, there it is. So if I believe I type in W-2, right here you've got document or video on W-2 filing instructions, video or document. That is from January of 24, but like I said, folks, the process is fundamentally unchanged. Um, also, if you, I believe, do 1099 as well, we have right here merging 1099s from accounting and payroll and 1099 filing instructions. Okay? So just FYI, you've got information out there until we get the new, uh, any new updates from Atrix with regards to that. These resources are out here and available for you to access right now uh, if you're unsure about that and how that will work. Okay? Um, the 1099s and 1096s on that page there on page 2 says, if printed through Atrix, there is no need to print any of the forms to the red ink forms like we used to do. Okay? There is no requirement for the red forms, certainly not through Atrix. Okay? And the new three contractors to a page is supported in Atrix as well. So they meet all of the requirements that are, the government now requires for that, and that's whether you're e-filing or whether you can print them. You can still print them and mail them in as long as you're printing them through Church Windows Payroll and our Atrix interface. Okay? E-filing options there in the middle of page 2. Church Windows provides the e-filing option through Atrix, and as it states there, the prices start at $27.99 for e-filing W-2s, and then another $27.99 for e-filing e 1099s. All right? That is the minimum that they charge. So even if you had five 1099s and five W-2s, you're going to be paying that $27.99 twice. Okay? Um, above that, there is then, if you have no, way more employees or a lot more employees and contractors than that, at above that $27.99, there is, if I recall correctly, a per document price that they eventually switch over to once you get to that. But they have the minimum $27.99 for both filing W-2s and 1099s um, there. And it's peace of mind, folks, really, honestly. They take care of it all. They mail them in. They can, they can mail them to your contractors and your employees or not. You can print those. It really depends on what you have, how many employees, what do you need to send out, and how much work do you want to do, okay? So just FYI on that, okay? It does also mention you also have the option to e-filing W-2s um, through the SSA and 1099s through the IRS, but you cannot do that directly from the software other than through Atrix. You can certainly take the information from Church Windows Payroll and or accounting in a form of a report, and you can plug in those figures into the SSA or the IRS's website, but there is no way to export or create a file that you can import into the, either one of those government systems. Okay. Other URL links below that are helpful with regards to e-filing W-2s through the SSA or e-filing 1099s through the IRS, okay? Just FYI, all of these information and website pages are just providing helpful information for you that you may be able to get direct answers about, <clears throat> okay? Um, and utilize those. That's what they're there for, okay? Finally, at the very bottom of our second page there, no end-of-year procedure is required in payroll, all right? There is no, 
unlike accounting, right? When I go into accounting, if I want to set up my 2025 accounting year, I actually have to go through a process of telling the system that I'm creating that 12 month profile and copying or putting, you know, entering my chart of accounts into that new accounting year. Pardon me. Um, payroll has no such animal. There is no end of year procedure. Everything in payroll is date driven. Whether it's reports you're producing or anything else, but there is no way to nothing that you go up here to in special functions and manage years. I mean, I hit like I have an accounting here. Okay. When I go into church windows payroll, I go up to special functions. There is no manage years under settings. There's nothing there. There's nothing that basically says I want to set up my new year. Okay. It's why you need the church windows update to include those new tax files or tax tables for the new year. Okay. Also at the bottom there, if you choose to e-file through Atrix, your church will be subject to sales tax. They notified us that and we sent out emails to our users earlier this year notifying you of that. And if you're eligible for sales tax exemption, exemption, you will need to submit the appropriate document to the Atrix folks to, um, so you can be reimbursed for that or not pay that, okay? So FYI, folks, oh yeah, and they're in the little right above the knowing of your procedure. Create the 2025 accounting year before you can run your 2025 payroll and transfer to accounting. That only makes sense, right? You cannot post payroll into an accounting year that doesn't exist. In fact, you can be in payroll for in, once we get to 2025, if you got into 25, it's January 1, 2025 on your computer, and you go into payroll and accounting new year is not set up, all of those accounts, checking accounts and expense accounts and everything else will all be blank because the software doesn't see a chart of accounts yet. Okay? So just be aware, you've got to make sure your accounting year is set up in order to post 2025 payroll and transfer it into accounting. Okay? All right. I'm going to leave that there for our topic for today.